I went to pa uh, Patchway School and then I left school because my father wanted me to stay home to help my mother with the babies. Patchway was, well, it was fun. It was just the common then. All there was was the little shop at the top of the road um, and a little row of three cottages. Then there was nothing. There was Grandma Wheeler, that was an elderly lady who was deaf, and we used to go in because she used to have a big trumpet in her ear. So Gordon used to blow in it <laughs> and nearly drive her crazy. We knew there was going to be a war. It was building up. And on 1939, when uh, Chamberlain made his speech, we had this old um, radio, and so we were all standing round and heard the speech. Everybody was hoarding sugar and tea and butter. We used to keep butter in a big, earthenware jar with water in so that it wouldn't go rancid. I got engaged when I was 18. I'd met my husband. He wanted to join the forces. He went down to join up and they refused him because he was at the BAC. But at that time he was company chauffeur. But they wanted him to go into the machine shop. They were putting everybody into the machine shop. And so he was on reserved occupation. But straight from that, he was taken out of the machine shop and he was, he spent the whole of the war really delivering aircraft parts. He had a really nasty war really, because he was on most aerodromes, he got bombed. Auntie Rose called me and she said, I heard the bombs dropping, but I didn't think, I just thought, oh, they only dropped four. And I'd heard these drawn bombs. And I was, and she said, Molly, you ought to come down. And I, I said, oh, they only dropped four. And anyway, I, the next explosion was, you just couldn't breathe, because I didn't realize then that they had five and they dropped that one in the garden. And so I leapt out of bed, and as I leapt out of bed, the, it was incredible. The, like the wall completely, the top part of the wall just fell in on the bed, and that was it. So I, I was managed to get downstairs, and that was where I saw Aunt Rose, and she was in there. She had gone in to, under the staircase and uh, in the little pantry, and the fin of the bomb, or a piece of the fin of the bomb, had come right through that little window and severed her femur artery. So that was why she had to have a tourniquet. I used a petticoat of mine. The femur artery was severed, and the blood, you know, I mean, it's a main artery, and the blood was just pouring. Somebody called out and said, is anybody hurt in there? And I said, yes. That was my aunt. And then I just don't... Oh, that's when I can't remember. Nan and me were standing by the gate because the tracers were, the, you know, the bullets were just going and the, the city was burning. One of the shells came through the roof of the house and started it burning, but because the far firemen were out and around and the first aid were all about, they were able to put the fire out. But somebody said, my God, there's china all over the place. And I said, my china or my wedding china was stored out there. And my all my glass and all my wedding present all smashed. We were in the garden and we said, 
oh, it's ours. And then all of a sudden we said, it's not ours, it's German. There was about 50. The sky was absolutely peppered with bullets and bombs. You're mesmerised. You look up and see all these aircraft coming over and you can hear the bombs dropping. But you still don't register that you might be one of them, really, I suppose. But, of course, the people from the works knew they had to get out. So they were just running and going wherever they could. So when we looked in the shelter, it was already full of different people. So that was when we walked down the garden and she said, maybe we ought to go under the stairs. This bomb just came straight down. We saw it. It just, like big flash, came straight down in the middle of her house. And we were standing in the garden Nothing. All that happened was a bit of shrapnel caught on my wrist and my watch fell to the floor. Neither of us were hurt. There was no house. It was about six inches. <laughs> six inches all the way round, completely gone. So there was this big empty space and people running all over the place because they'd been running down from the work. And she said to me, I suppose I ought to go and ring Ern, that was her husband, and tell him we've been bombed. And she said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I've got to meet Nan it too. I said, I've got to get up to Noel. And I can remember walking up the road and there were still trams and getting on the tram and going up to Noel and nobody saying a word to me, nothing at all. And I got out of it, no, and Nan said to me, whatever happened to you, you're grey from head to foot. Mm. And it was all the dust and ash and my hair and my clothes. And I could never understand why nobody said, except they must have all been in shock, like me. And then that night, that was the one night that they had another minor raid. It wasn't very much. We could hear the aircraft going over. And we just got, Nan and me just got under the stairs and I think I began shaking like a jelly. And that's all I can really say, that the effect that I actually had. Everybody did something, and I, as I'd already done first aid years ago, and I, I wanted to be a nurse at one time, but uh, and so I automatically joined the St John's Ambulance. But that was we used to have to go. We, I used to come from home from work and then go along to St Martin's Road. There used to be about that was the church hall, and that. There must have been about 40 of us. All the girls slept this side, all the men slept that side. But you kept your uniform on all night, your hat by the side, your collar and tie, you didn't, so that when you got up, you were pristine as you were when you went to bed. I reckon there was more romance that used to go on <laughs> during that time with all those young fellows one side and the girls the other side. At Bristol Airframe School, we were having airmen from Poland, Australia, and Canada, and of course British, young boys that were flying, but they knew nothing about the... They used to come to us for uh, instructions on the hydraulic system, the gunnery, and the uh, electrical system. So it was really to get the fundamental outlook. They're on my photograph. Those had been shot down. They all had leg injuries. And, of course, they came as instructors to the school. Then the war was easing off. It was obviously going our way. So you were able to apply for your release from war work, which is what I did. Everybody was friendly. Someone would say, which way are you going and join on? We had a lot of fun times. You made the best of it, and put it that way.